is where it begins. A place where she can dive into her dreams and swim against the current to reach her goal. It is a starting point of a journey to explore uncharted territories, to use new knowledge for the best of mankind, immersing in sustainable lifestyle, where you can feel the breeze on your skin. It's times like this that makes you feel alive. A time to create, a time to capture precious moments. Dreams are no longer just a dream, but the beginnings of a new reality. This is where I harness my potential. This is where I explore possibilities. This is where I expand my mind. This is where our story begins. This is Edu City. Most of us would know how to help if we saw someone having a heart attack, we will start CPR or at the very least call the emergency hotline. But too few of us would know how to respond if we saw someone having a panic attack or if we were concerned that a friend or a co-worker might be showing signs of depression. Mental Health First Aider is a helper who provides support to a person who is developing a mental health problem, experiencing a worsening of an existing mental health problem, or in a mental health crisis. Mental Health First Aider is trained to identify, understand, and respond. Many people are not well informed about how to recognize mental health problem, respond to the person, and seek help. We need to end the stigma and discrimination associated with mental health problems as there are many myths and misunderstandings about it, and professional help may not always be available. So, when the sources are not there, Educity introduced Happy, the first mental health first aid kit in Malaysia. Happy Kit was introduced to increase the chances for early intervention among Educity Skandar students and staff, which can result in a fast recovery. Happy Kit contains flashcards with important information and contact numbers, eye mask, stress ball and earplugs. Now, we are introducing Mental Health First Aider. As a Mental Health First Aider, we are taught to recognize people's struggles, to look out for the signs, triggers, and symptoms, and find out how to guide a person towards appropriate treatments and other supportive help. Imagine 
in the workplace, the certified staff will increase awareness of mental health issues, helping staff communicate and be open, and foster a positive working environment. Imagine, in a student community, they will have a point of contact if they are experiencing emotional distress or suffering in silence with mental health problems, such as stress, anxiety, or depression. Mental Health First Aider is trained to identify, understand, and respond. And we need to make Mental Health First Aid a skill essential to our frontliners, as common as CPR. For EduCity community, if you need us, do reach out to us through our email here. For EduCity Village residents, you can find me at EV office should you have any questions to ask. Don't suffer in silence. We are here to help. We can do this together. Hashtag kita jaga kita. Hashtag EduCity jaga kita. Hi and Assalamualaikum. Welcome everyone to the Jumpstart Your Career Talk on JYC Talk by Edicity. I am Emilia Timpaka and I will be your MC for today. A warm welcome to our participants and viewers today who are watching Edicity Series 7, Jumpstart Your Career Talk, streamed live on Zoom and Edicity's official Facebook. For the third series of Career Talks for the year 2022, we will feature Mr. Eddie Suresh, the Johor State Director for United Nations Global Compact Malaysia and Brunei, as the speaker and moderated by Mr. Muhammad Ibrahim Abdullah, Head of Foundation, Study and Research Institute at University of Berlin, Malaysia. Before diving into the topic, let us get to know a little bit about our speaker today, which is Mr. Ali Suresh. Mr. Ali is a board director and the general state director for UN Global Compact Network Malaysia and Brunei, the official local network for the United Nations Global Compact. Mr. Ali has an executive certificate in sustainable business strategy from Harvard Business School, various certifications in business and sustainability subjects, as well as masters in business administration from City University. Next, let me introduce you to our moderator, Mr. Muhammad Ridwan Abdullah. Mr. Ridwan began his career teaching academy English, research writing, human communication and English immersion programs to local and international students before joining the University of Reading Malaysia. Mr. Ridwan's current role is leading the foundation, Study and Language Institute, which offers international foundation program, pre-sessional English program, general studies program. His role involves expanding the institute and ensuring quality delivery in Malaysia. A member of Melta and Bali, Mr. Ridwan holds a Master of Applied Linguistics. On today's episode, we will be discussing on the topic of competing for the best sustainability and ESG professionals. Mr. Eddie will be sharing his opinions and experiences in the area of environmental, social and governance, ESG, the path to becoming an ESG professional and why you should choose ESG as your stepping stone for your career trajectory. To our viewers on both Zoom and Facebook platforms, we would like to encourage you to be as active as you can in this session by interacting with us in the comment section or posting your questions in the Q&A box. Without further ado, I will pass the session to our moderator, Mr. Ridwan, to kick off the session. Over to you, Mr. Ridwan. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Chimpaka, for that uh, lovely introduction. Um, we're so lucky today to have uh, Mr. Eddie Suresh, uh, Joe State Director of United Nations Global Compact uh, with us. Um, he's going to talk a bit about uh, Sustainability Development Goals, uh, SDG, and also Environmental, Social and Governance, Sustainability, uh, ESG. Um, why not start with uh, Mr. Eddie's uh, presentation first before we have our conversation about, about this topic. Uh, Mr. Eddie, are you ready? Yes, yes. Thank you, Ridwan. Eh? Let okay, me share over my screen. To you. All right, right. Cool. Thank you so much. Give me a second to just quickly share my screen. Is it visible? 
Yes. Awesome. All right. Thank you. So, hi. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you. Ridwan, thank you, Edu City Iskandar, for organizing meaningful session. Thank you to all the participants who are spending time. I know that you know it's been a zoomified life that we've been living and yet again we are all meeting again in another Zoom call or Zoom platform. So I believe but then that the sharing done today will help our audience to get a good understanding on the topic the opportunities that sustainability can bring from a talent perspective and also give them an opportunity to ask some questions you know that might they might be lingering in their mind. So uh, I'm here and uh, I hope that I get to answer as much as possible, right? So in my session, I'm going to be sharing a snapshot of the United Nations Global Compact's role or uh, UNGC, uh, what is sustainability and ESG about, and the talent demand for sustainability practitioners, right? So first and foremost, uh, just in case anyone can't see my name, uh, I'm Eddie. I'm a board member and the state director for the UN Global Compact Network Malaysia and Brunei or UNGCMYB, uh, which is the official network of the United Nations Global Compact or UNGC, right? Now, the UNGC is a non-binding United Nations pact uh, to encourage businesses and firms worldwide to adopt a sustainable practice and policy. Uh, it was established in the year 2000 by the former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan. And the UNGC is a call to unite businesses under the world's largest business sustainability initiative. We are here to extend our global and local platform to assist companies on their sustainability ambitions. So that is our mandate and that is our role. Right? So the UN Global Compact currently has about 16,000 members uh, globally. Uh, we are present in 69 local offices. And in Malaysia, we currently have over 150 participant members from Malaysia. Right? Now, the UNGC is a principle-based approach derived from human rights, labor, environment, Corruption. We aim to mobilize a global movement of companies to achieve sustainability by using our principles, our academy, our tools, our resources, our training, as well as our network. Every CEO of participating companies of the UN Global Compact commits to embedding these principles into their business strategy and their business operations. They are a common ethical and practical framework to mobilize corporate responsibility per se. It is derived from the UN declarations and conventions, and they represent the fundamental values that business should embed in their daily strategies. In addition, we have a mandate to deliver the Sustainable Development Goals or the SDGs. Now, I hope that all the participants here today get to remember this acronym SDGs, as we will be repeating it continuously, as well as ESG, right? Now, what are the SDGs? The SDGs are a set of goals that clearly what it is and what we mean when we say we want a better world. The SDGs relate to a deeper purpose for business. They are the boldest vision, uh, not only to me, but to many, that humanity has ever adopted. They represent aspirational long-term targets for businesses and other stakeholders to work together towards creating a more sustainable and equitable world. Working in a valued and principled way towards a set of ambitious goals is the way that we want to deliver a world that we want. So when we talk about the SDGs and the businesses, what we are telling businesses is that you can be profitable and sustainable at the same time. Businesses must do well in order to do good. Uh, a business that is not doing well can't be expected to do good, right? Now, a common question that many come across is how do we embark on this sustainable journey and how do we get across this, this maze of, of all these interesting alphabets, right? So UNGC, that is our role. At UNGC MYB, we cut through the complexities while helping companies and businesses to achieve their objectives, shape values, and as well as change their business strategy to become more sustainable. So our aim is to give the knowledge from a local as well as a global navigating standpoint. Eh? So as you would notice, many uh, examples that you can Google and find uh, will be globally based. So our is to also localize the context so that the local guys are not left behind. They are not left out of the conversation. And the intention is that so that no one is left behind and all forms of businesses, SME, micro SMEs, uh, large uh, PLCs, GLCs, no one is left behind, right? 
So these are among the things that we do. And I won't get into the details because uh, our topic awaits us after this, right? So this is just an overview of among the things that the UNGC uh, M does in Malaysia, right? Now, without further ado, I want to deep dive into the topic of the day. Is there a demand for talent in sustainability? Now, before we get into the big question, we must know how to get to the big question, right? So again, a recap on the SDGs. The Sustainable Development Goals are also known as the Global Goals and also known as the Agenda 2030. I'm sorry, there's many acronyms and there are many short forms, and many reference names. They were adopted by United Nations in the 2015 as a universal call to act uh, on to end poverty, to protect the planet, and to ensure that by 2030, all people enjoy peace and prosperity. And when I say all people, that, that includes all 50, 60, 70 participants that we're going to have today as well, right? So we wish peace and prosperity upon everyone. And that is why the SDGs came into place. The 17 SDGs are integrated. They recognize that actions in one area will affect outcomes in another, and that development must balance social, economic, environmental, and sustainability as a whole. It is a holistic approach that is required uh, to be achieved in order for us to have a more conducive living environment. Right? Now we go to the next set of alphabets. I know Redwan is quite uh, engaged by all the alphabets that we have. Uh, now we come to ESG, which is an acronym for Environment, Social and Governance. Eh? Let me repeat that, Environment, Social and Governance, ESG. Now ESG takes the holistic view that sustainability extends beyond just environmental issues. ESG is best characterized as a framework that helps stakeholders understand how an organization is managing risk and opportunities related to environment, social and governance criteria. Eh? So while the ESG is often used as a term in the context of investing, eh, uh, stakeholders include not just investors, but also the community, which consists of the consumers, the suppliers, as well as the employees. Eh? Now, all of them are increasingly interested in how sustainable an organization operates. Secondly, we will be putting resources uh, when it comes down to ESG because measurability as well as reporting is quite important in this particular aspect. Eh? I will give you a little bit more details on how do we do the measurability of this. Now, here are the components of ESG or environment, social and governance. Eh? Under the E factor, we have the carbon footprint, you know, climate change, waste management, for an example, water management, for an example, energy efficiency, and so on. Eh? Now, under the S components, which I think now in Malaysia, it is uh, quite well known. Eh? We've had some big companies in Malaysia uh, that have been uh, under this year and uh, seem to have lost business opportunity if not being embargoed uh, from exporting to the America, right? So under the S component, you will see gender equality at workplace. You will see human rights. You, know, you will see health and safety, child labor, better working conditions for the workers, for the staff, eh? dormitory standards and things like that. Eh? So I think with that, some of you will get the hint on the companies that seem to have uh, uh, taken a, a little bit of a hit when it comes to ESG. Eh? And the G component, we can notice the from policy making there, uh, corporate governance, business and so on. Eh? So the ABCs are under the governance. What are the ABCs? The anti-bribery and corruption. All this comes under governance. Now, when a company works on their ESG, that means they are now holistically transforming that organization to be conscious of the environment, to be conscious of their workers and their staff's well-being, and at the same time, make sure that there is proper governance in place to, uh, for them to be checked. There's a check and balance. Lesson. So, in a nutshell, I would like to put that these three elements make up the triple bottom line. Companies conventionally focus on the bottom line, which is just profit. And now with the rise of sustainability, the triple bottom line is the new business strategy. Eh? The triple bottom line is a business concept that persists, uh, the, the positions firms uh, should commit to measuring their social and environmental impact in addition to their financial performance. Eh? not just solely focusing on profit. That is the old way of doing business. Now, the new way of doing business, the people, the planet, then the profit also comes into the play. So it's very interesting to see how we are shifting from the bottom line to the triple bottom line. 
Okay, big question. Talent search. Is there a talent search to begin with? Is there job opportunities around sustainability? Now, this could be some of the questions that you might be wondering about, right? So we've seen that the fundamental sustainability and ESGs are now taking shape. And the big question is, are there opportunities for talent? If I were to give you a short answer, the answer is yes. You can see here now, the big four, uh, the firms that are well-known uh, in terms of audit, right? I've picked up Ernest & Young here, Price Waterhouse Cooper or PwC, Deloitte and KPMG. These guys are spending billions to assemble vast global network of sustainability experts to help companies measure their greenhouse gas emissions, and diversity pledges, overhaul supply chain, and comply with forthcoming regulations. Now, the reason that the big audit firms are growing their talent pool is because there is a demand that they are looking to supply. And where does this demand come from? It comes from the companies and it comes from the banks which offer sustainable finance. So if you, if you notice uh, over here, you will see uh, they are not investing in the millions, but in the billions to upskill their manpower and also to attract talent to join them in terms of sustainable in terms of sustainability so now sustainability is everybody's business eh? so long story short is there job opportunities inside of this sustainability realm yes there is now i've had this question come across quite often are these global jobs are there jobs related to sustainability in malaysia what about johor do we have sustainability related jobs as well now a simple google search will show there are over 3,700 jobs available related to sustainability in Malaysia. And they encompass sustainability officers, environmental officers, CSR officers, sustainability managers, and it goes all the way up. Eh? It's not just a manager, manager level or a mid-management mid uh, position, but it goes all the way up to chief sustainability officer, which is a C-suite level potential. Right? So if you, if you one day aspire to be a CEO, a CFO, a COO, now please add on CSO to your list, which is the Chief Sustainability Officer. Eh? Uh, this is a very important uh, role that is given now. So apart from the C-suite the C level, working level, there is a lot of opportunities. Eh? The sustainability officers are much needed to give advice, not only on environmental issues, but also issues in getting financing from the bank. Ah, this is very interesting. I will elaborate a bit more as I move along in justice to time. So I'm just going to uh, move nicely. But if there are any questions, feel free to always put it in the chat box and uh, I will come back to you. Eh? Now, next question will be, I'm already learned or I'm already a working professional. So how do I become a sustainability talent? You know, is there a way for me to become a sustainable talent? So to say, right? So firstly, I must say it must start from the passion. You must be passionate about sustainability. You must be passionate about the environment, about social as well as governance. Uh, it begins with passion. Eh? If you want to become a banker, you must be passionate about numbers. If you want to become a lawyer, uh, you must be passionate to argue. Right? And if you want to be a, a good lecturer per se, like Redwan, uh, then you must be passionate about teaching and learning at the same time. Right? So similarly, if you want to be a sustainability practitioner, you must be passionate about sustainability. Hmm? That is very important. You must always remember that about people, planet, as well as profit. Eh? Because without profit element, then there is no sustainability to begin with. Now, if you are a working professional, my advice to you is get certifications in any of the sustainability-related fields. I will be happy to share my slides with all the participants today. You can use this as some reference points here. Among the certifications which is available uh, to upskill yourself and to attune yourself to the sustainability conversation. Now, I also know that there are fresh graduates as well as university students who are part of this conversation today. So I would suggest you start off with the EDX and Udemy platforms. Go over there, check up some of the free courses or entry-level courses just to gain the exposure, right? So I'm not, I'm not promoting any uh, education institutions, but what I'm saying is go and look it up first online on the free platforms, as, uh, EDX and Udemy, for example, and Get the awareness around the conversation first. Then you will know what you're getting yourself into, so to say, right? So no point getting into sustainability uh, as a talent 
without understanding what will be the scope of the work. So that will give you a good uh, overview and insight on what you are going uh, to get, right? Now, moving on, um, for the professionals who are attending the talk today, who are already in sustainability, for an example, I would suggest don't forget to constantly upgrade yourselves. Now, sustainability is just picking up traction, right? In some places faster, some places slower. So as long as you are inside the chain of sustainability, you will have to constantly upgrade yourself to remain relevant to the conversation. Eh? So for an example, you have standard givers such as the GRI or SASB. They themselves provide training and certifications at their own platforms. You can also alternatively use the UNGC Academy, uh, Global and Online Academy. Uh, it's a... LMS, uh, whereby you can sit and learn at your own pace and upgrade your skills accordingly. Eh? So these are for the professionals who are already in practice. Uh, this will be my advice to you, right? So another question that might be lingering in your head, wow, looks like I have to go back to the drawing board, you know, looks like I have to upskill myself, looks like there are many things that I need to learn now if I want to get into sustainability, but is this really happening? You know, is there really a market for us to get into or all this is just some uh, nice lingo for us to use, right? So to answer the question, I want to share with you, the biggest fund manager in Malaysia is KWSP. And they have announced that they are going fully ESG compliant by 2030, which means that all the companies that they invest in must adopt ESG and sustainable practices. So for an example, Edicity is, is a good example, right? And the KWSP, in fact, is one of uh, uh, their, their stakeholders. And with that, Edicity now will also have to pick up more ESG and sustainability related components to fulfill this policy criteria from KWSP. Very interesting, right? So uh, looking across the bridge, I mean, we as Johor, Johor guys, we always have to look at our neighbor, in Sing which is Singapore, right? And Singapore has declared a climate emergency, which means that their policies of doing business will change and attract new sustainable investors, as well as provide new job opportunities in of sustainability. So moving forward, companies will, will start to pivot towards sustainability and ESG elements. And that means that they will need to get in more talent and they will need to get in the right talent and upskill them uh, in order for them to be more susceptible to sustainable businesses. Right? Now, one more example that I want to give you guys. Uh, this, is, this is one of the reasons why companies are making a shift. Financial institutions or banks, uh, they have been providing sustainable link loans and green financing and ESG has become an important businesses to adopt sustainable business strategies. Eh? There are many banks now, and in fact, some of the examples that I picked out here, uh, this HSBC has given a $200 million financing to Yinsen. And Yinsen is a Johor-based company. And uh, when companies take a sustainable finance or green loan from the bank, what does this mean? The bank will give you better interest rates, and in return, you will need to give an ESG report to the bank. So this is very interesting. Now, can a CFO actually come up ESG report, yes, but he will definitely need help from the sustainability team, right? So this is among the experience that I've seen. I've seen many companies that come to me and tell me, we need help because we are trying to secure a financial uh, a term loan, but the bank is asking us for ESG commitments and we don't have a sustainability person to advise us, which means that they are going to hire. Okay? So it's, it's a very simple and very straightforward yes that there is a lot of job opportunities when it comes to sustainable. Now, just to share with you guys, globally, UNGC has 16,000 members. Locally, we have about 150 odd members uh, participating with us. When I say members, I'm talking about companies. These are all the companies that participate with UNGC, which means that these are all the companies that will hire, already hired, giving job opportunities, upskilling, and giving the platform for sustainability practitioners to come and work there. We are talking by the likes of Busa Malaysia. <coughs> Excuse me. We are talking the likes of Damansara Assets, Port of Tanjung Pelepas. And we are talking about Sorry, I got a bit too excited. <clears throat> and we are talking about Plus Malaysia, Eco World Property Developers, BCB Berhad, Ting City, uh, HSBC Bank Amana. Smith & Nephew, Own Mumford. We are talking about a whole bunch of industries here. These are not just the big guys, but they are also SMEs. They are also micro SMEs. 
companies, you know, there are also mid tiers, there are also GLCs. Globally, I don't need to say the biggest investor in the world, BlackRock, is definitely going ESG. Unilever, Nestle, uh, Meta, which is uh, Facebook, they are also a UNGC member now as well. Eh? So why I'm showing you all these beautiful logos is just to reiterate the point that there will be a lot of job opportunities coming from the sustainability angle. And these are among the companies that will be giving you that opportunity. So keep a lookout, uh, get to know more about this conversation. I hope you understand what I just uh, gave to you. Although it's a, it's a very concise 20 minutes and a snapshot of <laughs> how I can send it across. But I hope that that opens up the thinking faculty that sustainability, there is jobs. It is no longer about just trying to be an NGO saving the planet, but now companies themselves are looking at the triple bottom line, are looking at sustainability, are looking at ESG, giving job opportunities, raising talent, you know, making environment of workplace better, making sure that the environment that they operate in is sustainable. It doesn't impact the future generation to come and they want to be more responsible at how they do their business. So I hope that this gave you guys an eye opener. I know that this is not a conversation that we can quickly zoom in and you know give you the entire A to Z, but in this uh, 20 minutes sharing session, I hope that I opened up your thinking faculty just to look up further on, is this a possible job opportunity? Or, and if you're already a working professional, is this a possible uh, new scope of work that you should be looking into? Uh, anyone who have any additional questions apart from the session today can email me, can reach me on LinkedIn and so on. And I'm going to pass it back to our moderator, Ridwan. Over back to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eddie. That was a great presentation. Um, I'm going to summarize um, the presentation uh, so that uh, some of our participants who's just joining uh, will be able to know we are uh, where we are at right now. Um, it can get a bit overwhelming because there's just so many um, acronyms used uh, in that presentation. Um, it's actually quite simple. All you need to understand is that SDG is the umbrella term used to talk about uh, sustainability development goals. It's basically uh, uh, the goal set by UN on making sure that uh, uh, making sure sustainability. And then we have ESG, which is uh, related to how companies are run. Uh, and this is the bigger part of what the conversation is going to be about today. Uh, we are going to talk about environment, social and governance, and how companies can uh, make changes and how can you as students, graduates, and perhaps working professionals can make uh, adjustment to your vision, your goals, and maybe your career, uh, so that you will be able, to, so that you'll be ready for, for, uh, for the future. Um, the future is sustainability, basically. Okay, so um, some of these ideas, some of these goals can uh, look. Uh, insurmountable but they are not uh, impossible for uh, to be implemented by by companies and as you can see from the slides just now they just so they are just so many companies that are uh, uh, looking into uh, being a bit more uh, ESG compliant uh, and they have shown their commitment to to this um, I'm just gonna check my my notes uh, Mr. Eddy also mentioned about talent search, and I have some questions about that, um, about talent search. Uh, I hope those of you are still uh, who are with us right now, our participants, you can uh, you know, listen in closely uh, uh, to the answer that, uh, to the question of um, how important for you to upskill in order for you to be ready for the future. Uh, Okay, so I have some questions for Eddie. Eddie, are you ready? Go ahead, sir. Okay, so I have some questions for you. Um, now let's talk about um, adoption okay. uh, and growth. Yeah, uh, you mentioned that uh, there are currently 130 business uh, participants in Malaysia. How how is uh, do you can you see that the number will be growing or it's just gonna be 
hovering around 130. <laughs> so can you just explain a bit more about that sure. adoption, sure. basically? How how quickly are we uh, adopting to this to these goals? Sure. Um, good question, Rizwan. Thank you. Uh, I, I can break the question down to two components. Eh? Uh, one part is the companies that are working with the UNGC MYB itself. Uh, let me share with you that two years ago, we started with zero companies. And now we are 150 odd companies, which has made uh, the UNGC Malaysia and Brunei as the second largest growing network in the whole of Asia. And that means that the push towards this sustainability conversation is definitely happening, right? Now, what about the growth rate in the market? Now, if you are a public listed company, a PLC, which means you are listed on the Bursa Malaysia board, then it is mandatory for you to do sustainability reporting. There is no two ways about it. It is not a voluntary uh, system. So if you have thousands of or a few hundred or thousands of companies which are registered with Bursa Malaysia as on the uh, the exchange, then it is mandatory for them to do sustainability reporting. So that op automatically opens up job opportunities there uh, at the first tier. Now, for the second and third tier, GLCs, as of what we heard from our Minister of Finance, uh, they want all GLCs to adopt sustainability as part of their practice. Eh? So ESG is going to be a, a push from the MOF itself, which means that all GLC leaders and then cascading down from the board level all the way to the working the down to the employee uh, will eventually get to know about ESG, right? So I can't give you percentage numbers, but I can give you a positive uh, remark that it is on an uptrend and there are going to be a lot of movement when it comes to uh, how quickly the take-up rate is going to be. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, thank you so much. And I hope uh, everyone can see that uh, this is something that... Uh, the UN is taking quite seriously. Uh, this is definitely not greenwashing because it's just not limited to you know such, uh, the environment. It covers basically all areas of running a business. Now, my second question: um, What what do you have to say to skeptics who are used to looking at uh, bottom line, and now we are? trying to nudge them, suggesting that uh, we should be looking at triple bottom line. It's actually one of your slides just now. Yeah. Um, so what do you have to say to them, those skeptics who think that bottom line is the way to go? Of course, Ridwan, in Malaysia, we have many skeptics and, you know, Malaysians are known to complain and <laughs> criticize first before adopting anything, which is fine, you know, we must poke holes in the idea first before we can actually make a move, right? Now, one of the main reasons that we have skeptics in this field is they don't see this as a business opportunity or they see this as a cost. You know, if I have to do reporting, I have to hire new talent, I have to do this, I have to do that. I cost you know if i tell them hey save the planet and do good business everyone says yeah i want to do that right but when i tell them that you know there's going to be cost involved then they start you know they start becoming a skeptic quickly so my question to them is very simple usually the cost versus the loss of opportunity which one do you want if today you are supplying to nike for an example eh, and this is a true example because one of nike's exam uh, suppliers are situated in johor eh? taiwa garments is one of their their suppliers based in Sanai. Now, Taiwan Governments has signed on to become a science-based target initiative, which means that this company is on a net zero path of uh, uh, going zero emissions altogether. Right. So when I spoke to this company and I asked them, what made you sign on to this commitment? Because it's a big commitment, right? It's not, a, not something light. And their answer was very simple. As long as we want to supply to Nike, we must have sustainability ambitions. So it is a question of them losing business against telling that, oh, no, I don't want to do it, you know. If you need this cost in it, is all that, or you lose business, you go and supply to someone else. And I'm not just talking about Nike, you know, I'm talking about Nike, I'm talking about Adidas, I'm talking about Marks, Marks and Spencers. You know, most of the big fashion lines have all now adopted sustainable practices, which means that under scope three emissions, they will also need to cascade it down the supply chain. So, yeah, I hope that answered your question. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Um, that's a very good uh, example there. Um, so now I want to talk a bit about uh, graduate and students because I'm sure we have uh, uh, some of our participants are students um, and as an educator myself, um, this this is actually quite this issue is quite important. Uh, in fact, we teach uh, students at Reading uh, SDGs um, so that they can think about uh, 
sustainability and the University of Reading Malaysia and also uh, uh, Malaysia campus and also in the UK, we are pretty big on, on sustainability. Okay, so my question is, um, what can they do? I'm talking about students, yeah, and maybe fresh graduates. What can they do to be able to um, um, uh, to be able to find jobs mm. uh, and you know maybe upskill themselves uh, to be uh, to be working in, in in this area? Sustainability, I mean. Thank you. Fedwan, um, I think it is important. I want to reiterate the point earlier which I made, which is to be passionate about it to begin with, right? And uh, why I say this is I have come across uh, some um, of our younger executives who get into the sustainability space but without the passion. And when the passion is not there, it fizzles out quickly and, you know, then they tend to think that, you know, we want to look at something else, right? So now, what do you do if you are a student who has studied accountant, accounting, for example, and now you also want to add on sustainability? Again, go back to the free platforms that are available. In fact, also talk to your existing education uh, uh, providers. Eh? Could, it could be Edicity, it could be a reading, it could be anyone else. Eh? Or it could be a matter of going online and looking at EDX or Udemy upskill yourself, understand what is the scope that we're talking about here, you know? I, I mean, sustainability now, it's going to sound like a very sexy job, you know? There's going to be a C-suite level, there's going to be a manager level. So there's many interesting elements to it, but you must be getting yourself into it. Eh? So go out there, do a little bit of homework, you know? Take some free courses first, uh, test water, so they say, you know, before you jump all the way in, uh, you put one foot in first to see how deep does it go. If this is something that you see yourself doing, if you are passionate, if you are activist, you know, who loves the environment, who loves people and planet and profit at the same time, then get into this conversation, go and skill yourself, put yourself out there as a practitioner then. Okay, so that's, that's really good advice. Um, being passionate is definitely an important part of, of, of this. Um, uh, I want to piggyback on my third question. And this is, uh, this is the next question, question number four. I'm sorry, you guys, bear with me. I have, uh, this is the last question for me. Um, so we, uh, we talked about um, students, we talked about fresh graduates. Um, now let's talk about people who are already working, you know, working professionals, you know, they perhaps have some, they, they, they have the passion or maybe, you know, interest. They are uh, sort of like interested, even if they're not too passionate about it, what do you have to say to them? You know, um, maybe they are looking into uh, move, upward mobility uh, in their career, uh, or perhaps they just really passionate to to do this. Um, what would be your advice to working professionals? Yeah, that's that's my question. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I mean, I come across many working professionals who I myself personally have helped them change their scope of work from uh, from a different uh, department. Now they are now in in the sustainability department. Eh? So easy answer will be first look for UNGC. We are now in Johor. So UNGC MYB has a Johor office. You need more details on how you can work with us. You can always get in touch with us. So that's that's the easy answer. Uh, becoming my friend is the second easy answer. Then I can give you a lot of advice on my own, right? But apart from that. How else can you do what you need to do? First things first, understand what are among the certifications that is available. Eh? There is the International Society of Sustainability Professionals or ISSP, right? There is the Association of Climate Change Officers or ACCO. Again, sorry, Redwan, it's an it's a alphabet soup out there, right? And if you want to specialize, you want to know what you want to specialize in, right? So if you want to specialize on reporting per se, for an example, go on GRR get your professional certificates from the Global Reporting Initiative or get the SASB uh, fundamental on sustainable accounting and credentials uh, or CDP's uh, climate change survey certificate. There's so many certifications out there that it's now, it's, 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 it's down to what you want. You know, do you want to be part of the want to be part of the finance team which part do you want to be part of see i i am a practitioner myself right one and my wife interestingly works for uh, hsbc uh, malaysia and she is also a sustainability practitioner you know and the bank has upskilled her has sent her to frankfurt to study sustainable finance and now you can imagine the conversations that i have at home it's all about sustainability esg and, and the sdgs and so on right so 
me as a practitioner and my wife as a person who upskilled herself in this element, I'm telling you, there is a lot of opportunities in it. Go and get yourself skilled quickly and, you know, there's money to be made in terms of career path. Go and get it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, that was my last question. That's a really good answer. That, that was my last question. Uh, before I open uh, the floor for questions, uh, we, I'm sure some of you have questions to ask. Um, I just like to re reiterate that um, the bigger focus that if there is one takeaway that everyone uh, wants to uh, uh, wants from, from this uh, conversation today, this presentation, is that you need to think about the, the trifecta of environmental, social, and governance. I'm trying to look at my notes because ESG, I just remember it as ESG. You have to look at it, uh, look at the trifecta in order for you to figure out, hmm, is that my passion? You know, some people, they are truly passionate about the environment and truly passionate about uh, uh, social issues and uh, governance. So just ask yourself whether or not you are passionate enough and then you can start from there. This goes to all the students out there and also working professionals. Um, or if you're looking for a job, you're a fresh graduate. Uh, ask yourself, maybe this is the path that 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 leads you to success, you know? Um, yeah, so let's open uh, the floor uh, for questions. Um, if, there is, if there's any question for uh, Mr. Eddy. I think I think there is a bunch of questions in the Q&A box. Oh, wow. <laughs> let me just, let me just figure out how to uh, see my, can or, uh, or do you want me to assist? Yes. Okay. Uh, oh my gosh. Um, how do I open my chat? If you see at the at the bottom, you have the your mic, your video participants box, and then you will see a box with Q and A. Oh, Q and A. There are twelve questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Let nice. me just look at some of the questions very quickly. Um, I see Chek Wan has day. put some questions as well. Yeah, one, <laughs> yeah. and Chek Wan Saifuddin asked about a good uh, course to study to have a career path in ESG. Uh, perhaps ACCA, you mentioned that's also a good, that's a good start, right? Yeah, or... uh, if, you, if you have a little bit of budget, uh, I would suggest the course that I attended myself, which was, which was uh, Sustainable Business Strategies. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's about 4,000, 5,000 ringgit, somewhere there. I mean, uh, affordable enough, but very informative. As you know, the Harvard uh, style of teaching is very case study based, right? So it is very case study oriented. You know, they're going to teach you about what Unilever did, what Nike did, uh, what Walmart did, you know, what Lipton Tea did. And, and from there, you will get a very good snapshot of uh, how to incorporate business strategies which are sustainable into your organization. So yeah, J1, uh, something for you to consider there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have an interesting question, uh, Mr. Eddie, uh, uh, on ESG initiatives. Uh, how can we create awareness in school? Uh, it's funny that we keep talking, we kept talking about, about, about fresh graduates, students in university, uh, you know, working professionals. Maybe we should just take a step back and, like, you know, just think about school children, you know, students in high school, like how can, what can we do to create awareness? Mm, I agree. I mean, group it, of people. the awareness must begin from, from childhood, right? And uh, of course, as an individual, I, that will be my answer whereby we must have this as part of our education syllabus from the beginning itself, you know, teaching children about environmentally being conscious, about understanding social and governance and could be good practice to begin with, right? But from the UNGC MYB's perspective, that is not our way to work with education per se, right? So the best that we can do is work with professionals as well as upcoming talent, such as what I'm doing today. I'm talking to uh, students from the university. But when it comes down to working with children from uh, Sekolah Randa and Sekolah Menengah, usually UNICEF uh, does the engagement. So, so as you know, the UN has many agencies, right? Uh, the famous ones are now WHO, which is now well known thanks to COVID, uh, and they handle health. And we've got UNICEF that handles uh, children. So we, we all to our mandate. So our mandate 
on the UNGC MYB side is to work with companies on their sustainability ambition. So uh, two answers there for you. Uh, my, my individual or personal answer will be, in my honest opinion, yes, this must be something that is inculcated in children since young. Eh? With one, I'm also going to share with you something which is a bit shocking, which I hope that everyone here also remembers. Over the past 13 years, from 2015 to 2018, Johor Bahru's surface temperature has increased by 6 degrees. It is becoming much more hotter and hotter and hotter every day. And a 6.7 degree increase is shocking because according to the Paris Agreement, we don't want to go beyond 1.5 degrees, right? So we are at 6.7 degrees increase in Johor. Now, this information shouldn't be just me and you talking about. It should be school who understands this. It should be education level from, from Skola Randa, Skola Menengah, and so on. All of them understanding what is the impact of the 6.7 degrees in Johor, you know, sea water level rising? Does that mean there will be more poverty? Does that mean that there's going to be more people falling sick because of the heat spells? You know, what does all this mean? And it should not be a conversation among professionals alone, but it definitely needs to be a professional among children as well. So, yes. Such a great answer. Thank you for, for highlighting that, that uh, our temperature is definitely rising and it's quite shocking to hear that it's, uh, it's up 6%. And six degrees. Six degrees, not percent. Six mm. degrees. Um, um, you know, perhaps for us, it's it's not too obvious because we have AC at home. You know, if it, we have so many malls, people don't really feel like, oh, it's, it's, it's really hot. I would like to just highlight that some of my colleagues in the UK are trying to cope with the heat in, in, in the UK, you know, that uh, it's just so hot in the UK right now. Some of my degrees. <laughs> yes, it's, and the country is not... Uh, isn't ready for for that kind of heat you know it's not built for that kind of heat and some of my colleagues are you know sweating when they're in 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 in, in meetings you know mm. uh, even under the aircon no? they don't they don't have that they don't have the infrastructure to support mm. that kind of heat so they have to you know work from home and and it's really obvious when when you don't really have ac at home and you can really notice that it's really hot Mm, um, yeah, that's something that we need to talk uh, to children in school. Okay, I will take one more question. I'm going to summarize two questions. Um, it's actually on uh, acceptance rate. Um, so I'm going to link that to another question on uh, acceptance rate uh, by GLC. Like... Mm -hmm. So the question, how do you plan to initiate sustainability mindset to GLC? So that is linked to whether or not they are accepting this or, or not. Mm. Okay, All right. Now, I'm going to refer back to what uh, the MOF has uh, mentioned eh, when it comes to things like this, right? So the Ministry of Finance have mentioned that they are confident that not only the public and private sector uh, will pick up ESG as a commitment, but also the government-linked companies. Eh? So he said that it's encouraging to see, if I quote his words, if I recall it right, it is encouraging to see GLCs embrace the sustainability agenda by incorporating uh, ESG as in environment, social and governance into their core strategies, right? So when you got the Ministry of Finance pushing this towards the GLCs, uh, I think the take-up rate, even though slow, but it will definitely pick up in traction very quickly. Eh? So this is uh, comes down to coming from down to say, right? So there is leadership uh, from the MOF talking about sustainability and nudging GLCs to also adopt sustainable engaging the board level, CEO level, the C-suites level, and then coming down to management level, coming down to working level as well, in terms of encouraging the rest of corporate Malaysia to consider how they will behave better when it comes to their business. So asking me if this is going to be something that will actually happen with the GLCs, my question is, my, my answer will be yes. Uh, in fact, Kazana National has also launched their sustainability framework and targets. Uh, and, and, and it also clearly that, you know, it's going to be ESG focused developments and for projects, whether it be for programs and so on. And the future budget is also going to capture this. So. Now, the question back again comes back to, uh, one, if there is a top-down buy-in, then yes, they will do it, which it means that yes, they will do it because there is a top-down buy-in. Number two, when it comes to the budget, 
patterns and things like that. So uh, ESG will be a component that will be incorporated in it. So yes, there is a nudge to move forward. Maybe we are we are in the conversation, right? But it is definitely moving. It is definitely getting there. Okay, so um, let's end with that. You know, it's definitely moving and it's definitely getting there. Uh, and I think we are quite positive uh, uh, that uh, more companies will be adopting this. And, you know, uh, I can see that there's just so much interest from, from the public uh, or at least from participants uh, uh, in this session today. Um, the uh, sustainability is the future, basically. So I don't have any more questions for you. If you have any question for Mr. Eddie, you can uh, get in touch with him directly. Um, and yeah, that's all from me. Uh, I'm going to pass this back to... Thank you so much, Eddie. Thank you so much. Thank I'm going to pass, pass this back to uh, Ms. Chimpaka. Chimpaka, are you ready? Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you, thank you so much for the insightful session, Mr. Adi and Mr. Ridwai. I believe all of us have learned a lot of things, especially me, myself, being a final year student. In, for, in terms of me going into the industry soon, I think it is important for us as the students to get a little bit, at least the basic knowledge of ESG to be what they call as industry ready. So with that, I would like to thank everyone here for being with us today. I am sure the participants have gained useful knowledge from what has been shared during our session today. For those who might have um, missed today's sessions, do not worry as we will upload them on our YouTube channel. Before I end the session, I would like to request Mr. Adi and Mr. Ridwan to sit still as you are going to have a very quick photo op. Okay. Give us a big smile. Okay, technical ready? Okay, one, two, three. Okay, another one. Technical ready? One, two, three. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much. So a quick info sharing on our upcoming events. Uh, so the first one for the month of July is join us for a one-day event happening this Saturday on 23 July 2022 at Abbey City Complex 1 Iskandar Putri. The Parentis Meetup is in collaboration with Pejabat Adam Kota Iskandar, Majlis Belia Negeri Johor, Dewan Muda Johor, Persatuan Iskandar Johor UMP and Majlis Pengakilan Pelajar University Technology Malaysia. It is exclusive for youth community who are keen to start working immediately. Next in line, stay tuned for our upcoming virtual event, namely Fast Space Sprint, AI Robotics Industry Seminar happening on Tuesday, 26 July 2022 from 2.30 to 4.30 p.m. via Zoom platform. This seminar is a collaboration between Adicity Iskandar and the Express Street, featuring an excellent lineup of speakers, namely Mr. Mr. Edwin Lowe from Imagine AI Syndrome Berhaid, Dr. Afnizan Faisal Abdullah from Synapse Innovation Syndrome Berhaid, Dr. Noor Azmi Alias from Atapul Asia Syndrome Berhaid, and Dr. T. Fai Yang from DF Automation and Robotics, and this session will be moderated by T.S. Dr. Aik Shai Chong from University Technology Malaysia. This seminar aims to provide businesses or industries with information about automation, AI vision, and robotic solutions, and how they can affordably adopt these solutions to increase productivity. And last but not least, for the month of July, is LDCT Expo Makan Food Fest 2022 happening at Angsana Bar Angsana Mall from 29 to 31st July 2022. While you enjoy a variety of delicacies at the food festival, while you know how big is the festival, don't forget to drop by LDCT Wood to learn more of LDCT's latest offerings. So keep an eye out for our upcoming webinar series and don't forget to follow us on social media at Aducity Official for updates on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Please turn on your notification for upcoming events and webinars by Aducity. I am Emilia Zipaka. Till then, take care, stay safe, and we will see you in the next series. Goodbye. This is where it begins.
place where she can dive into her dreams and swim against the current to reach her goal. It is a starting point of a journey to explore uncharted territories, to use new knowledge for the best of mankind, immersing in sustainable lifestyle, where you can feel the breeze on your skin. It's times like this that makes you feel alive. A time to create. A time to capture precious moments. Where dreams are no longer just a dream. but the beginnings of a new reality. This is where I harness my potential. This is where I explore possibilities. This is where I expand my mind. This is where our story begins. This is Edu City. Most of us would know how to help if you saw someone. Having a heart attack, we will start CPR, or at the very least, call the emergency hotline. But too few of us would know how to respond if we saw someone having a panic attack, or if we were concerned that a friend or a co-worker might be showing signs of depression. Mental Health First Aider is a helper who provides support to a person who is developing a mental health problem, experiencing a worsening of an existing mental health problem, or in a mental health crisis. Mental Health First Aider is trained to identify, understand, and respond. Many people are not well informed about how to recognize mental health problem, respond to the person, and seek help. We need to end the stigma and discrimination associated with mental health problems as there are many myths and misunderstandings about it, and professional help may not always be available. So, when the sources are not there, Educity introduced Happy, the first mental health first aid kit in Malaysia. Happy Kit was introduced to increase the chances for early intervention among Educity Skandar students and staff, which can result in a fast recovery. Happy Kit contains flashcards with important information and contact numbers, eye mask, stress ball and earplugs. Now, we are introducing Mental Health First Aider. As a Mental Health First Aider, we are taught to recognize people's struggles, to look out for the signs, triggers, and symptoms, and find out how to guide a person towards appropriate treatments and other supportive help. Imagine, in the workplace, the certified staff will increase awareness of mental health issues, helping staff communicate and be open, and foster a positive working environment. Imagine, in a student community, 
they will have a point of contact if they are experiencing emotional distress or suffering in silence with mental health problems such as stress, anxiety or depression. Mental health first aider is trained to identify, understand and respond. And we need to make mental health first aid a skill essential to our frontliners as common as CPR. For EduCity community, if you need us, do reach out to us through our email here. For EduCity Village residents, you can find me at EV office should you have any question to us. Don't suffer in silence. We are here to help. We can do this together. Hashtag kita jaga kita. Hashtag EduCity jaga kita.